Hey everybody, this is Jed Clampett, and here's the first thing you know. Uh, inferences for a A population proportion, singular. Okay, so here we're interested in the unknown population proportion, P, uh, that has an outcome of successes, okay? Uh, so now let's go ahead and read example 12.1 on page 685. How common is the behavior that puts people at risk of AIDS? The National AIDS Behavior Survey interviewed a random sample of 2,673 adult heterosexuals. Of these, 170 had more than one sexual partner in the past year. That's 6.36 of the sample. Uh, based on these, these data, what can we say about the percentage of all heterosexuals who have multiple partners? Okay, so here we want to estimate a single population proportion, okay? So the population here is adult heterosexuals, and the parameter P is the proportion who have had more than one partner in the past year. All right, so uh, section B, the sample proportion, which is P hat, is used to estimate what your population proportion P is, okay? So it's like your population mean is mu, and we had um, uh, the sample mean, which was X bar. This is our sample proportion, which is P hat, to estimate our, our population proportion P. All right, so in the prior example, 170 of the 2,673 had more than one sex, had more than one uh, sexual partner, or... Uh, your p hat would have been that 0.0636. Alrighty. So uh, section C, note number uh, number one. Note that that, that um, uh, the population mean is going to equal our our p. So the sample proportion p hat is the unbiased estimator of our population uh, proportion p. So if the population is at least ten times as large as the sample, and the sample size is large enough to support uh, uh, the number times p. The sample size times p greater than or equal to 10, and your sample size times 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10. Then the standard deviation of your uh, p hat is um, this formula, and this looks familiar, right? So the p hat is equal to your p hat times 1 minus your p hat uh, divided by the, the square root of n, the square root of all that stuff, okay? And your book now is going to call this the standard error instead of the standard deviation, okay? So this will give us a confidence interval that's of the form your estimate plus or minus your Z score. Now Z is coming back into the picture, you guys. Not T anymore, but Z. Uh, times your standard error, okay? And your standard error is your standard deviation of your P hat, okay? That's, don't worry about that too much. We'll get more of that along with that in our next lesson. So note in practice, oops, that's supposed to be a C right there. In practice, let me replace that. Boom. Uh, we won't usually know the value of P, so we, can, we can't calculate our Z score, but in terms of proportions, we're going to go ahead and use the Z. So just right for this section, we're going to use Z. So conditions uh, to make inferences about a population of uh, the data uh, has to be an SRS from the population of interest. Uh, the population is at least 10 times as large as the sample. And both N times P hat and N times 1 minus P hat is greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so here's a real easy assignment.